So hi, my name's Lou, welcome to my channel. In this week's video, I'm going to be remaking a video I made in 2017. And it's a video where I showed you how to make a, uh, a purse with a sew-in frame like this one. So I made that video really quickly on my phone and it's had lots of you watch it and lots of comments ever since then. And it's one of the reasons I decided to really kind of give this channel a go was how much interest there was in that video. But I thought it would be really interesting to try and remake it with a better camera, with some lighting and a better sound, I hope, and, uh, and to try and go a little more slowly in some of the places that I may have rushed through last time. So, uh, here's how to make one of these. This is the frame that I'm working with and these come in all different shapes and sizes so you'll want to make a pattern based on the shape of frame that you have. Some of the frames don't have holes in and they're the ones where you glue the purse into the frame. So I've drawn around the top of my bag and I start making my pattern by just moving the side point out a little bit. The further you move it out, the more volume the bag will have. If you don't want any volume at all, if you want a really flat bag, then don't add any space on at the side there at all. And then I'm marking the midpoint of the bag. I'm only going to make half the bag pattern at this point. I'm marking down how deep I want the bag to be and then squaring off at the bottom. On a separate piece of card I'm marking one and a half centimetres in. This is going to be the seam allowance that I'm using for this whole project and I place the pattern piece that I've already made onto there, draw around it and then I flip it over and draw around the other side so I've got a symmetrical pattern. And then I add that one and a half centimetre seam allowance to all the other sides. This is going to be the pattern for my lining and then I'm going to make another pattern which I'm going to use for the outer part of the bag. So now I can alter that original pattern piece. I'm just measuring in and I'm going to cut along this line here. And again, I'm marking in one and a half centimeters on a piece of card. And I place the first of my pattern pieces in there and draw around it. And then I'm gonna make a gap of four centimeters, which I'm going to use to add a pleat at the top of the bag and a gather at the bottom of the bag. So I'm just splitting that pattern piece up by four centimeters. Put the second bit in and draw around it, flip it over and then add another four centimeter gap before finally placing the last pattern piece on and drawing around that. So this is the pattern for the main body of the bag in my main fabric and I'm adding one and a half centimetre seam allowance all the way around and then I'll cut that out. And now it's time to cut out my pattern pieces. First I'm cutting out the lining and this is a plain white silk and then because it's quite floaty and light, I also want to put in an interlining. Um, so I'm using some plain cotton calico and I'm going to interface it. So I'm cutting out two of the lining fabric, two of the interlining in the cotton and two of the interfacing. And then this is the main fabric of my bag and this is some blue washed silk and I'm cutting out two of those. So I've cut out two pieces of my outer fabric, two pieces of lining fabric, two pieces of interlining, and then two pieces of this iron-on interfacing, which I'm going to fuse to the interlining. So now I start pinning everything together, each of the fabric right sides together, starting with the interlining. And then with the lining, I'm going to put in a couple of extra pins at the bottom because I want to leave a gap at the bottom and not sew around the bottom because that's how I'm going to turn the bag through. With the main body of the bag, 
before I pin them together, the two pieces, I want to put those pleats in place. So I just fold uh, roughly where I want the pleats to be and, uh, and put a few pins in. And uh, I'll also put a couple of pins in the bottom, which are just to remind me where to put my gathering stitch in. I'll put a few stitches in uh, to hold those pleats in place within the seam allowance. So about a centimetre away from the edge of the fabric, and you won't see them when the bag's complete. I'm going to sew a gathering stitch along the bottom of each of those uh, bag pieces. I'm sewing a long stitch and I'm leaving a tail of thread at the beginning and end. Again I'm sewing about a centimetre away from the edge of the fabric so that this will be in my seam allowance. So to make the gathers you hold a thread in one hand and you use the other to softly uh, tease the fabric along. You want to hold just one of the threads. If you hold both of them it won't work. Keep gathering until your stitches are nice and even and you want to check the uh, the base of the bag against one of your pattern pieces uh, just to check that it matches up. And now we start sewing everything together uh, down the sides and along the bottom of the bag, leaving the top open for now. And when you start, don't start right at the, uh, at the edge of the fabric, leave one and a half centimetres. And then this is the lining that we're sewing, and we want to leave a gap of maybe about 10 centimetres along the bottom of the bag. That will allow us to turn the whole thing through. Sew up, up the other side, and again remember to stop one and a half centimetres before the end. And now we can sew the interlining, again leaving one and a half centimetres at the top. But this time we don't need to leave a gap in the bottom of the bag, we can just sew all the way around. So with the main fabric of the bag, we want to pin this together, and I'm putting lots of pins in where those gathers are, uh, because they have a tendency to kind of curl up and uh, and yeah, especially with this slippy fabric, you want to make sure they go through the machine nice and straight. So yeah, putting lots of pins in there to keep it all in place. But again, we sew down the sides of the bag, along the bottom, and uh, up the other side. Make sure when you sew the gathers that that line of gathering stitches that you can see is to the right of your needle. That means that uh, when you uh, turn the bag inside out, you won't be able to see them because they'll be in the seam allowance. You keep sewing all the way around the bag until you get to the other side. Again, remember to stop one and a half centimetres before the end and sewing backwards and forwards a couple of times just to uh, reinforce your, st your stitches. Now I'm trimming a little of the excess fabric from the interlining uh, so that uh, we can turn it through nice and neatly. And I'm going to box the corners. I do this by uh, pushing my fingers into the corner and making a little triangle, matching the seams up and then putting a pin in place. And I'm going to sew uh, across that corner. Again, I'm trimming some of the excess fabric from the lining, but I don't want to trim from the bottom because I want some of that excess to be able to sew it closed at the end. Again, I'm going to uh, push the corners out and put a pin in place. And then I'm going to sew directly across that corner. Now, I'm just doing this by eye because I've done lots of these, but if, uh, if you would like to, then it's really useful to make a little cardboard template and mark it on each one. So once I've boxed each of these corners out and I'm happy with the way that they look, I can trim off the excess in the corner. And I'm going to do all of the pieces, both the interlining pieces, the lining pieces, and the, uh, the ones from the main uh, bag as well. These will give your bag a fuller, more 3D look when it's finished.
So now we want to sew all the pieces of the bag together around the top. We'll start with the interlining and we want this right sides out. We push this inside the main body of the bag. Again, this is right side out. And then take the lining fabric and don't turn this through, leave it inside out with the seams on the outside. And you put that over the other two pieces. Now the job is to match up each of the, uh, the, the top seams. So I'm starting with the side seams and I'm pinning them either side of the seam, making sure that all of my fabric is nice and neat and the uh, seam allowances are folded back. And then I'll find the center of each piece of fabric, the, the, the top center of the bag on each side. And I'll start pinning there and then I'll pin towards those side seams. That way the, uh, the top of the bag will be nice and neat and all of the fabric will be evenly distributed around it. You find that if you pin from one side to the other you can end up with a little bit of excess fabric on one side or it could get a little twisted. So it's much easier to start pinning from the centre towards the outsides. In order to sew this, I'm taking the tray off my sewing machine just to give myself a little bit more room to manoeuvre. And I'll start sewing at one of the side seams. And all I do is follow the curve of that top of the bag all the way around. Again, I'm sewing one and a half centimetres away from the edge of the fabric. And you just keep sewing all the way around the bag until you get back to where you started. Now your bag is ready to be turned through, but before we do that I'm going to trim off some of that excess fabric from the top seam just to reduce some of the bulk in that area. And then on some of the curved sections I'm just going to clip a little bit into the curves. This helps the, uh, the final uh, piece when it's all turned through be nice and smooth. And now you can turn through that gap we left in the, uh, in the lining. Now I can close up that gap in my lining just by pulling the seam nice and, uh, nice and tight, putting a couple of pins in and then top stitching along it. It's going to be inside the bag so nobody's going to see it. Now I finish that top edge of the bag by pressing it. I do it a little bit at a time, rolling that seam between my thumbs and forefingers until it's all nice and, uh, nice and pressed and you've got a really clean curve. Now it's time to attach the frame. And you line it up with the centre of the top of your bag first. And then we're going to tack it on. I'm using a contrasting thread so it's nearly, really easy to see. And I'm sewing really quite roughly. I'm not going through the holes in the frame, I'm kind of going over the top and round it. Starting at the top middle and working towards the side and then I'll go back to the top middle and work towards the other side. Once both sides are nicely tacked in place I can start sewing it in properly and for this I'm using uh, some embroidery thread in a matching colour and these come in like six strands and I'm separating it out into three. So I'm only using three strands of the thread at a time. I'm not going to tie a knot in it. I'm going to start by just uh, poking the needle into the inside of the bag, bringing it up somewhere unobtrusive and making a couple of really tiny stitches in the same place. That will be enough to hold my thread and it won't come loose. And then I take it up to where I want my first stitch to be. And my first stitch goes uh, from the inside of the bag through the hole to the outside of the frame. And then I bring it back down into the next hole and make a tiny, tiny little stitch. I'm 
only taking maybe two or three threads and then poking back through the same hole that I came out of. This way you'll end up with a nice neat line of stitches on the outside of the bag where every stitch is filled in and on the inside of the bag what you'll see are really tiny little dots of stitches. Really quite unobtrusive. The first time I did this I realised that the uh, the embroidery thread I was using was, um, well I have to say it was quite a cheap one and it shredded going through those metal holes in the frame. Uh, but I uh, I tried a few different brands and eventually found one that worked absolutely fine. So if that's a problem that you're having then uh, persevere with it uh, because it, if you get the right thread it does work really well. So I keep sewing all the way around the bag and uh, when I get to the end I'm going to finish the thread off in a very similar way to the way in which I started. So I will take the uh, excess thread through the inside of the bag to a really unobtrusive location, make a couple of tiny stitches there and then pass the thread through the inside of the bag and then just snip it off and so the tail will be lost inside the lining. And that's it, apart from snipping off those tacking threads, we're all done. This particular purse frame uh, has little loops for a handle so I bought some lobster clasps and some chain in a matching uh, metal colour and I've just used that to make a handle. You open the chain using two pairs of pliers. Uh, you move one towards you and one away from you. Don't try and pull the chain apart, um, it'll weaken it. But, uh, but yeah, open it by kind of moving it to the side. And then you can attach your lobster clasps into there. And simply attach them to the bag. And that's all done. So thanks very much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed that. If you did, if you could press the like button, that would really help me out. If you'd like to see more content like this then do subscribe. I make new creative videos every week with sewing, making and art content. So I hope to see you again in another one. Thanks, bye!